anthem. It is so good to be seen by you. It is so good for us to be together today. And I know that over the last 18 months, and in particular the last two to three weeks, uh, it feels as if we've been at our darkest, and the country has been at its darkest, our communities have been at their darkest, and I loved how the church has responded over the last 18 months, but in particular over the last two to three weeks. And we've seen the lights of Jesus Christ through his church shining all the more brighter as the darkness uh, gets all the more darker and all the more pressing. And I'm more convinced now than I ever have been that the church through Jesus Christ, through his church, is the answer to the world. Uh, every problem that we have is that the solution is wrapped up in Jesus Christ through his church as his hands and his feet on the ground. And I've loved what's taken place, um, certainly on the Anthem property and throughout all of our ministries uh, over the last three weeks, how we've seen uh, Domino, Project Exodus, and even Anthem Church uh, as, 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 they, um, as we collectively move forward and as we collectively respond to situations. I've loved how uh, the church has responded and been the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And so if this is your first time visiting with us today, I want you to know that you are welcome. I want you to know this is a safe place for you. And I also want you to know that we are not just a family. We are a family on a mission. And our mission is to see uh, the, the rule and the reign of Jesus Christ established everywhere where we set our feet to. Every, everything that we put our hands to, everywhere where we carry influence, we want to see the rule and reign of God's kingdom established. And uh, that's the family that you're a part of. We're on a mission to see justice established in our communities and in our nation. And uh, we want to see a reconciliation between man and God and also between man and man. And so you're in for a treat today as uh, we sit under Rich's ministry and then as we worship together. Thank you again for being with us. And uh, if you're visiting for the first time, uh, it's so good to have you with us. Uh, please don't rush off. Why don't you send us some of your details? Uh, we'd love to get hold of you, not to, uh, not to sell you anything, but we want to help you take your next step towards community. So we're going to engage Rich's sermon now, and then we're going to worship together. Let's go for it. Uh, these past 17 months have been wild, crazy. We've had to adapt to a whole lot of things. But uh, I want to ask you this question. How have they been for your weight? How have they been for your weight? Uh, you see, you thought I was talking about your waistline. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the weight of our faith as we have been able to navigate 17 months and even over these past couple of weeks, just some of the social unrest that has been going on. And so today, this is what I want to, uh, want to accomplish. This is what I want to inspire us towards and hopefully equip us in. The, the scriptures in 1 Peter chapter 3 says this, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. I'm so conscious of the fact that uh, these 17 months of COVID, we've lost businesses, we've lost some friends, uh, we have had to pivot, we've had to make changes, uh, there's been trauma, our, our kids have had to grow up and in school, out of school, with sport, no sport. Uh, for some of the older folk amongst us, there's just been all of this change which is happening, having to get used to uh, online platforms when uh, we would normally be in person, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there has been loss and pain over this time and so many people have either lost their hope or not yet found words to even express something of the hope they have in God and so today I really do trust that I can help us on that journey and uh, when it comes back to uh, how's it been for your weight we're going to tie that in at the end of the message and so uh, just hang 10 for there we've got a couple of scriptures we want to go through uh, as we get to that and so the first point I want to make today the first kind of thing that I want to help us understand is this that purpose brings about endurance and so a statement that maybe we can pivot on today why do we explain the why the why of our lives, the why we do things. Why do we explain that? And the answer would be because we can endure pain if we know that there is purpose. We can endure pain 
if we know that there is purpose. So just a little story. This past week, uh, on a Tuesday morning, I run with another pastor, a friend of mine, and it's still dark when we go for a run. And then we pray a little bit, and we uh, are very fortunate. We live on the beach, and we're able to pray as the sun rises. But as we were running, uh, so much of the conversation was around what has been lost through the social unrest. Uh, businesses and, uh, that have gone up in flames, literally speaking. Uh, and then some of the anger that has come in the community policing forums that rallied and some had good elements, some didn't have good elements and trying to just process all of what's going on. And the run was actually, uh, b- besides being physically healthy, it was, it was just a, it was a painful conversation to have. And then we went and stood on the beach and we started praying together and the sun started to rise and just reminded us of God's mercies being new every day. And then at that moment, dolphins started to surf the waves and jump out of the water. And just a comment I passed was, how can we go from like literally 10 minutes earlier talking about the pain and the brokenness and the devastation that's taken place to the absolute beauty of creation? And it was like, I, I felt, I, I almost felt schizophrenic. I, I don't know that as a humanity, we're able to process the full wonder of God's glory and the full brokenness and effect of sin in our day and age. And we, we seem to just flick between it. Like, like one post on social media talks about the glory of God and then another post talks about the devastation and we just get bombarded with all of this. And how do we process it? And so purpose is so important. And in that moment, we were standing, we were praying and uh, we saw the dolphins and it just reminded us of God's mercies. It reminded us of his purpose of a redeemed creation. It reminded us of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he would give himself into the brokenness and the sin of our day and age in order that we may have life and have it to the full. And yes, we don't necessarily experience that day in and day out, but there are these glimpses in the midst of the pain. There can be this incredible beauty and redemptive hand of God. And so just being able to re set something of the purpose of God, being able to reset ourselves. It allowed me to go from that, go and have a shower and then get to my day. I serve as a pastor in Anthem Church in Durban. And so much of my day is around helping people just in this moment. And so there was a greater level of endurance because I understood the purpose of redeeming. And so purpose helps us get through the pain. It helps us endure the pain uh, when we know what the purpose is. 1 Peter 3 verse 9 9 says this, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. To this you were called. To this you were called. That has just been so profound in me, uh, uh, for me over the last a particular couple of weeks, there's just so much opportunity as evil seems to be all around us, as it seems to have risen over the last couple of weeks with some of the activities that have been going on, uh, particularly in KZN and Gauteng, as we've been able to see these things. There's, we, we can look and we can see the evil for what it is, and if we do not understand the purpose of a redeeming God and the purpose of Jesus and what we've been called to, then we can kind of like lose our hope. We, we just become... Uh, I I think just overwhelmed with the pain and the brokenness. But if we can see the purpose, if we can see that all creation will cry out the glory of God, then we're in a position to be able to say, actually, in the midst of the evil, I am called for this very thing that I don't repay evil with evil, but I repay evil with blessing. Opportunity is all around for blessing, all around for blessing. And so maybe we ask the question, okay, so how, how do I live in that? How do I become a person that just shifts from uh, seeing the evil to seeing the blessing? Or how do I shift from uh, not uh, watching my tongue, uh, so uh, not repaying evil with evil, but actually being a blessing? How do we see that? Well, there's a, small, there's a story in Acts that uh, just talks about uh, Paul and he's, uh, he's in captivity and he's on a boat and he's sailing somewhere and there's this massive storm and uh, the storm cracks up the boat 
And uh, in this moment, Paul says no one is going to lose their life. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of their vehicle that was taking them safely on passage, that being ripped to pieces, it is kind of like so much of what uh, our lives look like now. Businesses, families coming under pressure, churches not being able to gather in in person mode, um, even though we're still able to connect. And so keep pressing into that space. But so much of our world has been devastated and kind of broken to pieces. We read this. Paul says this, he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on any other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. Everyone reached land safely. And so I want to encourage us today, just as we look at purpose bringing endurance, if we can just reset purpose, reestablish purpose in our lives, that actually there's something of what we do that helps others to reach land safely to reach land safely. And the beauty of this is some could swim, some got on planks, some got on other things. It's not so relevant as to how they got there, but it's the fact that they did get there. And so you have different gifts uh, that God has put in us. And if you're going on a journey towards Jesus, you can trust that those will be revealed in time to come. And so actually together, some of us, if I can just really be uh, uh, not literal for a second, some of us have planks as our gifts. Some some of us are able to swim and we're able to carry others on our back. Uh, some, as the scripture says here, just on other pieces of the ship. We, we've all got different things and it could be the other pieces. It could be the planks. It could be the ability to swim. But all of it, the goal, the goal is to bring people safely to land in the midst of the shore, in, in the midst of the storm that is taking place. And so I want to encourage you. Can you, can you just in God find purpose again? The purpose, the God who lets the sun rise on both the righteous and the unrighteous every morning, his mercies on you every day. Dolphins that would dive through the waves, seemingly unaffected by everything that we've gone through. This redeemed, this redeeming journey of Jesus, of all creation to sing his praises. If we can put that deep within us, we can be a blessing in the midst of all the pain and brokenness and effect of sin that is going on around us. This is how we do church. The goal is to get people to safety, but we use a multitude of gifts to do that. Number two, promise brings courage. Purpose brings endurance. Promise brings courage. Just a, a kind of a statement that I'm going to build this point around. It's quite interesting because Israel feared that they were going to die in taking their promised land. They ended up dying in the wilderness. Because they feared dying, taking the promised land, they saw giants, they, they, they needed courage to get into their future, they ended up dying in the wilderness. And I don't want us to be a people that do that. Whether you know Jesus today, whether you don't know Jesus, our desire is that we would live life in the, in the fullness, that we would live towards this incredible future that God has called us to. And so let's not fear dying as we move forward because that just results us dying where we are. And so we want to keep being a people that uh, can move forward. How do we do that? How do we uh, build up our courage? Well, we, we anchor ourselves on the promises of God. And some of those are eternal and some of those are also just for this day. And so we're going to look at some of these things. So for us as Anthem, as a community, uh, there's an area in Durban called Cornubia, and it's the new growth node of Durban. And uh, we felt two and a half years ago, God put a dream in our hearts, a promise that he would take us to a new land, which is this place called Cornubia. Uh, if you've been following any of the unrest in KZN, you will see that Cornubia was one of the hotspots of the social unrest. There was absolute carnage and mayhem that took place uh, in Cornubia. And so I had people phoning me, uh, people outside the church that knew of our story, people inside the church phoning saying, hey, Rich, are you sure we still want to do this? Can you see everything that's going on in Cornubia? And I'm going, of course, it just deepens my conviction. It deepens my courage to go into Cornubia, that in the depth of the evil that is going on, in the depths of the depravity of humanity, that's where we want to go and be a blessing. And so it's only strengthened my resolve, but that only happens because I stand on the promise.
promises of God. And we as Anthem stand on the promises of God. And you, friends that are tuning in, will you come and explore? Would you remind yourselves of the promises of God? The eternal promises which, said in G- which says in Jesus Christ, we can have salvation when we put our trust, not in our own selves, but in Him and what He's accomplished. When we, when we stand on that promise, we know that our eternal destiny is secure. But what we also know that for today, Jesus says, I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. His spirit goes with us. That doesn't mean we're not going to have pain. It doesn't mean we're not going to feel the effects of brokenness and sin, but it means we can endure. It means we can have courage to take on all of that which we are going through. 1 Peter 3, 14 and 15 says this, Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as God. In your hearts, revere Christ as God. You see, the promise, friends, of Christ's salvation, His return, our eternity with Him, His never leaving nor forsaking us, these promises bring us courage in days when our hope has been darkened. We can have hope for a future. We can have hope. We can have courage to take on our future, not fearing death for our future and therefore dying in uh, where we are statically uh, in our land today, not, not being trapped in the, in the fear of today. And so may I call you into that space today. May I, may I remind you of the promises of God. May I remind you to, to even, not even just the eternal promises of God and the salvation of Jesus, but what has he spoken to you? What has, he, what has he put in you? What has he given you the gift of? What can you dust off the shelf, so to speak? What can you wipe away the fear to say, actually, I want to pick this up. And yes, it may take courage. And yes, my energy resource and my emotional resource has been strained over the last 17 months of COVID and et cetera, et cetera. But actually the promises give us courage to move forward into our future. Thirdly, problems bring about opportunities. Problems bring about opportunities. And so just a statement to, to kind of remind ourselves and maybe anchor ourselves on is this, that people who run from problems run from opportunities. People who run from problems run from opportunities. Opportunities are found in problems. There's a scripture in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 where Joseph tells his brothers who he is and he's been uh, sold off into captivity and there's a whole journey that goes through. You can, you can familiarize yourself with the story, but, but his brothers intended harm to him because he was like the favorite son. They intended harm and he gets to this amazing moment of redemption later on in his life and he says this in Genesis 50 verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. In the ESV version uh, of the scriptures, it says this, that many people should be kept alive. In that day and age, there was a famine and uh, people didn't know where to turn for food. That's certainly been the case in KZN uh, right now. And in my home city, uh, people are scrambling for food and there's massive food aid going on and and things in, in order to get food into people's hands as there's food insecurity. And so we can tie this very easily into our day and age uh, and our story. But just fascinating this thing of what what you intended for harm or what the enemy intended for harm or what another intended for harm, God intended for good. And uh, I want to say this, friends, so often that scripture or some of our stories, uh, it says what, what, God had, what, what the enemy intended for harm, God turned to the good as though God intervened in the action and then changed the course. But that's not what the scripture says. Joseph went through all of that. There was no change of course. It was what the brothers intended for harm, God intended for good, that very action. And so in the very problems of today, there is the intention of God for good. There is the intention of God for good. And so if we can reset our minds, if we can reset our eyes, we're able to start to look for the opportunity, not just the problem. It's easy to see the problems. Easy. But only as we put our trust in Jesus, only when we have courage to look towards a future, are we able by the Spirit of God to see the opportunities that lie before us, that we may repay evil with blessing for that which we are called to do. Just a story 
um, uh, of the Wright brothers. And so the Wright brothers built the first airplane uh, back in the early 1900s. And they lived in a city where there was no wind. Uh, th that's how the story goes, or very little wind. And so they could very easily, uh, with the dream in their heart to build a flying machine without wind, kind of gone, ah, oh, jeepers, well, the problem is we don't have wind. And so just put the dream on the shelf, never become the first people to build something that could get us that could get me here uh, today to be able to minister to you and just bring something of a message to you. But they weren't people that saw the problems. They were people that looked for the opportunity. And so their opportunity, I'm just reading here so that I can get the story right, that 790 kilometers away was a place where the wind was just right for them to test their machine. And so they looked for the opportunity, and it was 790 kilometers away. They shipped, their oh, when I say shipped, they overland, they carried their flying machine in parts, 790 kilometers to reassemble it because the wind was just right there, and we know the rest of the story. We have airplanes today because of them taking hold of an opportunity and not being afraid to do the hard work of 790 kilometers. What is your 790 kilometers, friends? What is the opportunity? What is the hard work, the communities that you work in, the, the people, the colleagues that you work with, and some of the dire uh, positions that they find themselves in? What does that look like for us at this point? point in time. You see, the darkness of the past 16, 17 months has proved an incredible opportunity for Anthem. And so I trust that the story I'm about to tell brings you courage. We had an organization called Heal Our Land, which is just recently established. And I'm not going to mention names, but some very significant wealth, uh, a, a part of that Heal Our Land saying, actually, Domino, we'd love for you to spearhead the food distribution to bring food security to our land. At the same time, we have, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to mention names, so, but we, we just have a very influential figure in the US phone us and say, we want to partner with you. How can we help? And so Domino, just by faithfully serving day in and day out, day in and day out, positioning herself. And then when the problem hits, the opportunity is there and Domino explodes. Project Exodus, a couple of weeks ago, we get a phone call from the BBC to say, we've, we've looked all over the place for addiction recovery work and we want to do a documentary on you because of what's taking place in the addiction space. And so friends, I want to encourage us that in the ordinary, everyday faithfulness of what we do as we keep positioning ourselves to take hold of opportunities in the midst of the problems, God can do amazingly, abundantly more than we could ever think or dream or imagine. This is our story. This is, this is what is available to each of us that walk with God. We're not bound by only natural things. We have the supernatural. We have the things of heaven that we can embrace here on earth. And so this is something of the story of problems bring opportunities. And so I want to tie these three elements that we've just spoken about up into this. That weight brings impact. Weight brings impact. See, God does not measure the church by counting, but by weighing. He doesn't measure the church by counting, but by weighing. Let us not believe the false reality of how big is the church it's this many people or that many people or it requires, we, we, we need this many people to accomplish this. No, it's weight. And this ties me into that first question when I just said, how, how has COVID been for your weight? Have you put on weight at this time? Uh, many, of us, many of us have put on a little bit of weight around our waistline. Uh, but I, I would ask this, has the church put on weight? Have we developed our faith muscle? Have we seen opportunities amongst the problems? Have we taken courage because of the promises of God? Have we built endurance because we have established and reset our purpose? And so God does not measure churches by attendance, but by weighing us, by weighing how much Jesus there is in our community, in what we do. You see, it doesn't matter how much you do, but rather how much what you do matters doesn't matter how much you do, but rather how much what you do matters. We're a people of hope, friends. We're a people who are able to bring hope into the darkest days. We're a people who are able to bring courage and purpose, etc. Psalm chapter 91 says this, and I know that it's something that has been preached in this church. 
Help me to number my days right so that we can gain a heart of wisdom. And, uh, and Craig was just saying this uh, yesterday, in fact, when we were chatting with him. It's not about counting our days, but rather making our days count. It's not about counting our days, but rather making our days count. You see, we all wish we could do more. We all wish we could do more. But do more of what is the question I would like us to ask. We're all carrying weight. We're all carrying weight. But may I say at this time, we've possibly picked up some weight that we should not be carrying. We've picked up fears and it's weighing on us. We've picked up despair and it's weighing on us. We've picked up other people's, um, uh, other people's lies about us and it's weighing on us. We've, we've picked up weight. But God says, actually, repay evil with blessing. And so there is a weight that God is asking us to carry, but because we're carrying so many other weights, it's that weight which breaks our back. It's that final weight that God asks us to, to be the hope in these days. And we just say, actually, I can't do that, God. I'm emotionally exhausted. I'm physically exhausted. And these things are real. These things are real. But as we come before the Savior, as we become before the great Redeemer, as we heal our souls, as we watch dolphins jump out of the ocean and we watch the sun rise and His mercies on you every day, we're able to lift off the wrong weights. We're able to let go of the wrong weights in order to take the weight that Jesus would ask us to carry, in order that with courage we could take hold of a future, that we could bring hope, we could take hold of the opportunities that lie before us in order to see people come to safety, people come to salvation. What the enemy has meant for harm, God has intended for good. Which side of the coin are we going to fall on, friends? There's an invitation to us to put our trust in Jesus at this point in time, to say, Jesus, we trust you. We take our cue off of you. We take hold of the fact that you've called us to bring blessing into this world, that we would, we would counteract the evil with blessing. This is our story. I end with this story for us today. It has been proven that children who lack physical touch are more likely to grow with abnormality, even more likely to grow up sick and even death. Jesus has called his church to be those who would shepherd a generation to come. He's called us to be those that would shepherd a generation to come. Can we discipline ourselves to be weight carriers today? Can we let go of what we shouldn't so that the next generation, sh can we let go of what we shouldn't be carrying so that the next generation will not be malnourished and begin to die? You see, if the church grows in such a way that it grows beyond what it can touch, it will become malnourished and begin to die. And I think the church has taken on some stuff. We, we've grown in weight, but it might not be the healthy and helpful weight that Jesus has called us to. And so as we, by discipline and training, as we do by the equipping of re receiving the scriptures in our heart and allowing them to come to life in us, we're able to shed the wrong weight and gain the right weight. We're able to let go of the fat and build muscle, if I can use that analogy, in order that we as the church would be able to keep growing and reaching so that the next generation does not become malnourished, does not become sick, does not, at worst case scenario, die. This is the mandate that we've been called to. This is what we get invited into, and it is incredible. These past two weeks have been mind-blowing for me. The, 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 uh, the scale of the pain and brokenness and sin of the social unrest in Durban and what we've witnessed and experienced, and yet these phone calls from the minister and the presidency and Heal Our Land and BBC, it's just been mind-blowing that we can hold these, that we've got the God of the heavens of all creation about his redemptive story and the enemy that brings destruction and brokenness and both have intentions with every action that takes place. What will we see? We have this beautiful story. You are weight carriers, friends. You are weight carriers. You can bring, you can bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into a broken world. You can add your weight. And as you add your weight to others, 
and collectively we add our weight to our, together as Jesus comes to weigh the church. It's not about the numbers. We read that too many times in the scriptures that there were too many people and the armies then became smaller and God won the victory. It's not about the numbers. It's about what we carry in our hearts and what we have courage to go forward in. And so I would say this to us, just to remind us as I close, always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. I have hope because I have purpose, because I have the promises of God, because there are opportunities, and because God allows me to grow and wait. You have the same, the same opportunities before you. You have purpose. You have promises. You have opportunities, and you can grow and wait. And that's what God invites you into today. Would you take hold of that? Maybe you're listening and you have never put your trust in Jesus Christ. Maybe you've never taken hold of the one whose desire is to save you, even though your ship may be falling apart. Today, you are able to reach the shore, whether it be on some other planks or up plank or by being able to swim, all of that disappears as we put our trust in Jesus Christ. He's able to rescue you. And so I would encourage you to do that. And what that means for us is just saying, actually, I no longer trust in myself and of the things of this world, my house, my business, my family. I don't trust in those things for salvation that are going to rescue me. They've, they've proved fleeting, particularly in these days. And so would you just say, maybe in your heart, in your mind, you say, I, I want to put my trust in this Jesus, the one whose body was destroyed, that the enemy meant for destruction and harm, but God intended to be the salvation of all humanity and raised him to life again. Jesus can raise you to life again. Thanks so much for engaging in that. As we've heard from Rich, I want to encourage you, this is not the time to check out. Uh, we know that worship in our homes is a little bit different to worshiping together corporately. And uh, the exciting news that we have is that um, as of this week, as of today, uh, we have opened up in-person gatherings. And so if you were uh, unable to, to book a slot for our in-person gatherings, perhaps you were a little bit late to book, perhaps you're out of town. Um, you can. The good news is Monday, next week's slots will open up again. And so if you are wanting to join an in-person gathering, why don't you come and worship with us? Why don't you come and uh, be a part of an in-person community? And uh, we, we, we want to encourage you, keep encouraging you. Don't engage from afar. Why don't you engage from as close as you are able to get to a community, push into a community. Uh, we believe that community is not something that you look for. Community is something that you build. And so why don't you come and build community with us? If you're able to be there in person, we'd love to have you. Bookings will open on Monday. And I, I want to take a moment. So we've also got a moment to give. And uh, this is a moment for those that are part of our Anthem community. If you consider Anthem to be your home, if you are part of this family, this is a moment that you get to Continue to steward all of your resources, everything that God has put into your hands, which is not only finances, but it absolutely is finances. I want to thank you for your continued faithfulness, for your continued stewardship. If you're a part of this family, uh, as we see the mission of God worked out collectively through our, uh, our resources as they are pulled together. And so thank you for those who have continued to be faithful. And I want to call the rest of us to continue to steward every resource that God has put into our hands. Yes, that's our finances, but it's our positions of privilege. It's our influence. It's our relationships. It's our families. Everything that God has put into our hands, we are called to steward for the good and for the furtherment and betterment of His kingdom in our communities around us. And so thank you for that. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take a moment uh, to worship together now. And although it's different worshiping in your homes to worshiping corporately, I want to encourage you uh, to, to worship our God with us. Let's go. Hey, Anthem, it is so good to be with you today. We know that you have loved the setup that we had for our worship where we had it in the auditorium with everybody around us. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get back into the auditorium to do that, but watch this space, it's coming soon. So right now we're going to worship in the studio, but we just, let's engage this morning. Engage today, wherever you're at. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from, oh, is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide. The ransom for my life, oh, is my song. For you are good.
see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Stop working, you never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Thank you that you are our light. Thank you that even when we're in the darkest place, that you are our light. I pray for every single person that is feeling in a dark place today. Would you come and bring your light? Come and bring your hope. Come and bring your peace. Thank you that you are a way maker and a miracle working God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We bless you. We exalt your name, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you that you have called us 
to be a light in the darkness. I thank you that the light uh, is your light, your life shining within us, in the, uh, in the, it pierces the darkness. And I thank you that as our light shines brighter in the darkness, uh, that the darkness is not able to withstand it. The darkness is not able to understand it. And I thank you that the light of the good news of the gospel would continue to shine through every one of our lives, through our collective activity and through our individual efforts, that your light would continue to shine in the darkness, that your kingdom would be advanced and established here on earth as it is in heaven. We worship you. We worship you and we say that we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friends, I want to thank you for, uh, for, for engaging with us today. Thank you for being a part of uh, what we're doing online. Uh, again, I want to encourage you, if you, are, if you are able to join us in person, come and join us in person. And if you are not, for whatever reason, able, we want to keep building with you. We want to keep building community online. And so join us again, but don't join, don't join from afar. Uh, engage with us, uh, post your comments, uh, send us your details, get hold of us, help us to help you take a step towards community. And uh, I'm so excited uh, what, what this last two weeks have uh, meant as the domino uh, work has exploded. I want to tell you uh, there's, there's some good stories. Jump onto our website, uh, anthem.org.za, jump onto our Facebook page, go onto the Domino Foundation Facebook page and onto the Project Exodus Facebook page. There is uh, the work of the gospel, I want you to know, friends, has exploded. As the darkness has got even darker, so the light has shone even brighter. And the good news of the gospel is being shared far and wide. And that excites me, honestly, like, never it, has, like it never has before. So thank you for being with us. Have a great rest of the week, friends. What did I not cover? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs>